Hey, coaches, welcome to Championship Culture. Got a good buddy of mine tonight. George Colthorpe is the head football coach at Fairmont High School. He is a YouTuber. But I, I'll tell you this, there's three things that George has always excelled at. Uh, he's always been an expert at uh, reaching hard-to-reach kids. He's uh, always been an expert at recruiting the hallways. And then he's all, and, and then his, his game on getting kids into college is just at an elite level. I've never seen anyone do such a good job of taking at-risk kids and getting them in the right classes and, and getting the parents involved and getting them into college. So, uh, George, uh, excited to have you here, man. I've been waiting. I was trying to wait till we played a game to get you on here, but I couldn't <laughs> wait no more, man. This is taking forever to, to finally get on the field. But uh, super excited to have you here, man, and, and looking forward to learning from you, buddy. I appreciate it, Coach, man. I, like I said, I, I, uh, I'm, it's an honor to be on this thing. I know this is your baby, and you and I have worked together before on staff, and it, so I've got to see your, your ideas on building culture, and we actually kind of started a program together, um, kind of melding some of the things that I wanted to do with a lot of the things that you do. So I, I'm really excited to, uh, to be a part of this, and um, it just, uh, you know, it's something that's always kind of been a hobby of mine as well to kind of talk to other coaches and, and see what they do to, to be successful. Awesome, man. Well, let's jump into it. Question number one, can you give a one minute elevator introduction of yourself? Uh, yeah, my name is uh, George Coltharp. And like you said, I'm the head football coach at Fairmont High School in North Carolina. Um, I've been a, a football coach at uh, every level here in North Carolina, 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A. I've been a head coach, and I also had, had a year as an offensive coordinator at Lane College. Uh, I played football at Appalachian State University for Coach Jerry Moore. Um, and if you want to know anything about culture, that he's probably a legend when it comes to program building and things like that. So a lot of the things that I do, I learned from him um, and just being a part of that kind of program. Now, you know, we've never talked a whole lot about uh, the way Jerry did it. I, I always uh, just kind of felt from a distance that he kind of built it. You know, he's kind of a grandfatherly type guy and built a big, like, uh, had a big family feel to his program. Is that, is that a good, uh, is that a good explanation? Yeah, uh, if you, if you go back and, and even, even if you look today, um, when you look at Scott Satterfield at Louisville and Sean Clark up at Appalachian, um, and you look at Sean Elliott down at Georgia State, you know, all three of those guys were teammates of mine who uh, who came through the same time I did. And, and one of the things that Coach Moore kind of was, was an expert at was he he set the tone of the program, the culture of the program. And then he went out and got the Ruffin McNeils, the Stacey Searles, the, the George Edwards. And I mean, the names of guys who came through that program while he were there who now blew up and are doing huge things, but he went and got guys who could reach certain types of kids. And he was really, really good at hiring the right kind of coaches and growing the right kind of coaches. And, and that's one of the things that I've always tried to do. I, one of the things I'm most proud of as a head coach is I've had nine assistants become head coaches. And I learned a lot of that um, by grooming your guys, you know, and, and he was just an expert at that. And, and just, you know, the Tim Horton and, and just all of these guys who are now big time D1 coaches who were there when I was there. Dale Jones is the division uh, defensive coordinator up there. It was up there when I was there. So he just he, he really did. And one of the things they do up there is really cool. And they still do it today is they do a Wednesday night bonfire. All the coaches get together on Wednesday night and they have a bonfire devotional. And Coach Moore started that. And all the assistant coaches on Wednesday night after practice, they set up a bonfire over up by the cabin and they get in there and they do a staff devotional and things like that. So, I mean, it's really, really close knit group. And, and uh, you know, if you ever get a chance to hear him talk or any of the guys have been around him talk, I mean, I'm telling you right now, it's worth its weight in gold. Now, do you think, and this might be almost impossible to answer, but do you think it was, was he uh, recruiting the right kind of guys or was he the, getting good guys and developing them because that's a good list of well them. I mean take take it take it like this um Stacy Searles is the offensive line coach at um, University of North Carolina he's been at LSU he's been at Texas he's been at Georgia he was at Cincinnati he was at University of Miami his first coaching job was with Jerry Moore Jerry went and got him after I hired him as a GA and developed him and look where he's at now I mean and there's all kind of guys who have come through that program who did the same thing same thing with Scott Satterfield. He, he signed Scott Satterfield as a walk-on quarterback, came through, Scott GA'd for him. Scott was a quarterback coach for him. And now Scott is one of the up-and-coming young coaches in the country. 
Same thing with Sean Clark. Same thing with John, Brian Jean Mary. You know, all of these guys that I played with who were doing these kind of things. And, and he just went and got these young guys and taught them how to do it the right way and then pass them on to, to the right situations. And that was one thing that, that Coach Moore wouldn't let guys do. Don't take a job, take the right job. And, and I think that's part of mentoring as, as well. Yeah, <laughs> that would be uh, nice to have the, the right the right guy whispering in your ear on some of those. Absolutely, things. absolutely. All right, brother, number two, uh, what, is, what is the definition of culture in your program? Um, you know, I, I thought about this a lot because, you know, I've heard I've wa I watched just about every episode you put up. And, and for me, you know, I, I'm not real fancy with these definitions. For me, it's just the way we do things. I mean, simply put, it's the way that we do things from being honest with players and parents to setting a standard and trying to exceed it. Um, but, you know, one thing and we'll talk about this in a couple of other questions. But one thing with me that I've learned as I've gotten older as a coach is that you have to find your authentic self. It doesn't do me any good to try to be Joe Salas. Now, I can go listen to Joe Salas and learn from some things from Joe Salas and take a nugget from Joe Salas or Randy Jackson and all these other guys who are really good. But you have to find your authentic self. So one of the things that I've done, um, one, of the, one of the sayings, I think, to me, that, is, that has really changed the way I coach is that old how mummy saying where morale is more important than discipline. I want kids smiling when they're in the field house. I want kids smiling when they're at practice. So we try to have as much fun doing things the right way as possible. I, I tell you, my, my memory of Red Springs, and, and, I, and a lot of it was the kids, but we had such a great coaching staff there, was, you know, I remember the kids didn't want to leave. They didn't want to leave the field house. We'd have to, at some point, we'd have to chase them out of there. Yeah. They wanted to be there. They wanted to be around it. And that was – probably a, a you know multiple reasons for that but a lot of it was that that coaching staff and just the, the environment that you set with the program that it was going to be a fun place and it was going to be a fun adventure so uh so i've seen you do that uh and i know what a great job you do at it uh number three what are the three now there's meat and potatoes now what are the gotcha. three best things you do to build culture in your program um well you know the the first thing goes back to what we were just saying I, I think the first thing is you have to be authentic i mean kid kid kids can, can spot a fraud from a mile away so we, from the very first day when you walk in um you have to be able to tell the kids hey listen man some good things are going to happen some bad things are going to happen one of my favorite lines is that championship teams are the teams that handle the bad stuff the best and so you, you have to be authentic with them and let them know that this is not going to be an easy road, but on the other end of the road is, is a great prize that we can all go, go strive to get. And it, also, it always helps when you've had some success where you can point back and say, hey, you remember how bad that program was? And then when I was there, and then, then look what happened where they are now. They're one of the top programs in our region now, still, you know, you know, 10 years after we're gone. And that was because of the foundations that we put in place. So that being that authentic, um, the other part of that, I think, with authenticity is providing your kids with the best of what you can provide for them. There's no reason why your, your facility should be clean. There's no, not, should, should not be clean. There's no reason why things should be taken care of and put up. When kids walk in that field house and they walk in your equipment room and they see things organized neatly and stuff being taken care of, then that builds pride in their program. And you let them understand, hey, listen, I'm going to provide you with the best I can, but we have to take care of what um, we have. And there's nothing worse than when you walk into a, a field house and it just be destroyed or you walk into an equipment shed and it's just everything thrown in there. And that right there, that mindset of taking care of everything, doing the little things. One of the things that I learned from you, little things make big things. You know, that that is such a big thing. So being authentic is good. Um, the other thing that we talk to our kids about is being great. And this is kind of an acronym we came up with. And that means great means we want you to be goal oriented. OK, you start off first. Everything's got to be goal oriented, whether it's in the classroom, in the community, in the building, on the field, whatever it is. Um, and then the second one is respect. OK, respect yourself, respect your school, respect your community. Don't do anything to get yourself in trouble. Be right. Effort. That's real easy. Everybody can have effort. Attitude. you got to have a great attitude. Your attitude, you, you control that. Nobody can control your attitude. I mean, you're getting out here, you're going to play this. The best thing about COVID has been when those kids were able to come back out there for us for the first time, they were so happy to be at practice. And I said, guys, remember, see how much this means to you. So when you're out here and you're not having a great day, remember what it was like when you couldn't come. So that helps us with that attitude. And then that last one is, is that, that team concept, that trust. 
Um, so, you know, we go with goals, respect, effort, attitude, and trust. So we always talk about be great in everything you do. Can I trust you to go to class? Can I trust you to go home at six o'clock every night? Because that's one of the things we do. We don't keep them to 6.30, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. We're that air raid program. You know, we're going to have a two-hour practice. Part of me being authentic is I don't really have problems with kids coming to practice late because they know what time we're getting out every day. And it's, it's boom, 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 boom. But part of that is being authentic and building that trust. And then probably the third thing that we've started doing, this is something that's kind of a little different for me. And I brought this back from when I went to the college level is we, I call it the team 25 mindset. And, and what that basically is, is I want these kids to start thinking about where they're going to be when they're 25 years old. You know, I spent the, the better part of the early part of my career getting kids into college. And once they signed, you know, I would go watch them play and, you know, do all that good stuff. But after that, it was just like, okay, yeah, they're, they're there. Let's get started on that next group. But how many of them went up there, they didn't get a degree that they could do something with, or they came home because something happened to them or, you know, whatever that was. And that's because sometimes as high school coaches, we're short-sighted. We say, okay, let's get them to graduation. Let's get them to sign a day. And then bang, do we not, that doesn't mean we don't love them, but we need to coach them about what it's like to be 25. Okay. When you're 25 years old, I want you to have a career. I want you to, I want you to be a responsible citizen. I want you to, to be able to make choices. I don't want things to choose you. I want you to choose those. And that becomes what that comes with good decision making. Okay. I, I, one of the things I stole from um, Philip Fulmer a long time ago, they used to give their kids these little cards and they had their, their assistant coaches numbers on the back on, but on the front of the card, it says, is this going to help me get to where I want to go? So anytime they found themselves in a situation where maybe it was kind of iffy, they pull that card out and they'd see that and then they could get the number off the bat, you know, and, and call coach, say, hey, can somebody come pick me up or somebody do that. So one of the things we do with that team 25 mindset is start thinking about the next step. What's going to not just get into college, but getting a degree. OK, if I'm not, if, you know, what's the point of going to college and manage, and, you know, majoring in sports management? and thinking you're going to be a football coach and you get, and you get done with that and you realize you can't lateral entry into PE with that, you know? So we have to have those conversations. Um, and that's one of the things I kind of brought back from talking to the college guys when I was at the college level, they would say to me, you know, coach, my high school coach is the reason why I'm here, you know, but now that I'm here, you know, it's, it's so much more of a business and I, a lot of this stuff is now on me. And so we have to prepare them to be able to handle that. I, I love that idea, man. I've never heard you talk about that before. That that's a that's a big league idea. Just yeah, we it. actually have it. Um, we actually have it on the back of one of our hats. Um, I took that. Hold on a second. I'll grab it for you. Um, I actually took the uh, the wheelbarrow idea from uh, from Randy Jackson. I love his wheelbarrow story. If you've never heard the wheelbarrow story. And so we made uh, we made a logo with the wheelbarrow. So we talk about the wheelbarrow. Being able to carry. Yeah, there it is. And so, you know, that's what that's on the back of all of our hats. It's got the wheelbarrow with the tornado and it's Team 25. So it's kind of one of the things that we want to talk about and doing. So, is, tell, is, so uh, tell the tell the story the way you tell it. Tell the wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow story. Um, you, you know, you basically it was it was, you know, a guy like in the 1800s with the high wire over the um, over Niagara Falls. You know, and he's he's walking over and, and everybody's like, oh, wow. And then he sits on a chair and they're like, oh, wow. And he was like, well, you know, would you let him push you across the uh, the, the high road with a, with a wheelbarrow? He's like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And so the idea is, is building that trust is, okay, I gave every, my first team meeting, I gave every kid a rock. And I had them put their rock in that wheelbarrow to kind of sing, symbolize, okay, coach, we're going to be all in on this wheelbarrow and we're going to let you you know, lead the ship to where we want to go. And, um, and so that's kind of where we got that idea. We have a wheelbarrow and it's all painted up and all that stuff. And just kind of, just kind of getting that all in mentality that, you know, we're going to have to trust. And it's not always the same person has to push that thing. Sometimes the head coach has to push it. Sometimes the quarterback has to push it. Sometimes the linebacker has to push it, but that's going to be a really big part of what we do, you know, being able to push that wheelbarrow out onto the field before we, uh, before we take the field is, is kind of like a big honor for us. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, and you reminded me, you, you shared your uh, your PowerPoint with me, your your uh, first day PowerPoint, and I thought it was one of the better ones I'd ever seen. Uh, and probably just just talk about that for just a second, because I, I think coaches need to uh, 
I mean, I, I wrote it down as a big deal because I, I really had never done that before. But you came in and you had a PowerPoint with, with pictures in it that you went through with the kids the very first meeting you had with them. And, you know, I, I'm sure it, it feels like 10,000 years ago since it it was <laughs> shortly after that. But I just thought you did a great job of uh, really pinpointing this is what I'm, I'm about and this is what we're going to do together. And, uh, and I just think it's something that, that coaches need to steal because, uh, you know, we all need to walk into that first meeting uh, with a PowerPoint and be very specific about what we're selling. So, yeah, you know, um, a second. Yeah, you know, and, and, and if you want, I, I mean, I've got it right here. Just just looking at some of the things, um, you know, I started off with a Nelson Mandela quote. It, you know, it always seems impossible until it's done. You know, and, and we we. Um, you know, we, we come and, and what I did is I took, uh, I actually took, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll put it up on the screen for you just so you can see it. Um, you know, I took a picture of one of our kids. Can you see it? Yep. And, and you know, and, and, and kind of the mantra of the whole first meeting was, is we didn't come here to be good. We came here to be great. And, and, and that was my segue of being able to talk about what great meant being goal oriented, having respect for yourself and your program, being effort driven, attitude driven and trust driven. And, um, and, and so, you know, the knock on, on Fairmont had always been, um, you know, really good athletes and they won some games, but a lot of, you know, a lot of, you know, guys were getting in trouble and, and, and maybe not making it to the next level because they weren't handling some of their business. But, you know, we've also, you know, one of our better players is now running back at Duke. So we know, that it can be there, um, you know, and I talked to him about the three types of teams, you know, the bad teams where nobody leads, average teams where coaches lead, elite teams where players lead, you know, and I'm saying, well, hey, you know, which one is it? You know, do I have to pull you by the teeth? Because if I pull you by the teeth, we're going to be five and five. We're good enough to be five and five if I do all the work. But if you guys take control, and, and one of the things that I've done different, Joe, is I, I don't, um, um, after practice, you know how a lot of people make the freshmen put everything up and stuff like that. Um, my seniors are in charge of the equipment shed. They don't have to put the stuff in the shed, but they're responsible for how it looks. So the next day when I come to practice, if the equipment shed isn't right, the seniors are going to answer for it. Um, if the locker room doesn't look good, the seniors answer for it. Now, they don't have to clean the locker room. They don't have to clean the equipment shed, but it's their job to police it. And then what they do to get to do, they get to eat pregame meal first. They get to, you know, pick their seats on the bus and, you know, all the stuff that seniors should be able to do. But what I'm trying to do is create a, an atmosphere of ownership with that senior group. And so those are the things we talk about it. Um, you know, like I said, you know, and, and, then, and then the whole program allows me um, to, to, to go into that whole idea. And then, you know, I'm a big coffee bean guy. I don't know if you guys have ever read this book. I had, um, I had Damon on my channel. He's just freaking awesome. But, you know, that coffee bean is really good. Um, uh, one of the things that I learned from the FCA guy at Lane College, I always talk about is, you know, family, forget about me. I love you. Um, you know, just try not to be, um, you know, try not to be selfish. And, and, and so, like I said, man, if, if you want to, uh, you can share that, 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 uh, you know, that PowerPoint with, with, with the guys, if you want to put it in the, in the drive or whatever you want to do it. Um, um, and then the last thing I tell them, you know, before we, before we finish that meeting, I was like, you know, it wasn't your fault before, you know, it wasn't your fault before, but it soon it will be. Okay. We're not going to apologize for who we are. We're going to set that standard. We're going to be great. And then, you know, let's go, let's go do what we need needed to do and then unfortunately about you know two weeks later we got sent home from COVID so we didn't get to build on that momentum um during the spring like I really wanted to but. you ought to you ought to do it again when you get them back for real just start over just like it was first day again. yeah um you know we we actually had a we we had a really good session man when they came back on um, those guys and I was fortunate you know even though I had just gotten a job I had been on campus for a year so I knew a lot of the kids and that that helped as far as that was concerned but uh you know, we, I really wanted to make sure that we started this, this kind of thing out on the right, in the right way. Well, that's, uh, your, your 25 idea and your, uh, and that PowerPoint, uh, those are two definite keepers, man. You, you, I, I really thought you hit it out of the park with, with, uh, starting the whole day one with that PowerPoint and showing them exactly who you were and what, what you guys were going to do together. 
So uh, great job on that. That's I always look for, okay, where, what are the things people are going to want to steal? And that those two are definitely things to steal. Uh, number four, uh, what do you know now that you wish you knew when you first got started? Um, I really wish that when I first got started, I thought it was okay to just be myself. Like I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a walking suppository for, uh, for, uh, Bobby Bowden quotes. And, you know, I, I know all, I mean, I did all the reading, all the young coaches, you know, and I did all that reading and wanted to, to do some things, but, um, you know, and, and I, especially early on, I tried to be, you know, my head coach or another coach or, you know, you know, just did things because of the way, and, and a lot of it's just getting experience. But for me, um, I really wish that, number one, I wish I knew the air raid when I first started coaching because I would have won a whole lot more games. Um, but, um, you know, that it's okay to be your authentic self. And, um, you know, I, I, can't, I can't coach like you coach. You know, you're, you have a way of doing things. Now, I do know this, that when me and you were together, it's, it's out the park, you know, because we, we complement each other so well. And, and I think that's one of the things that I've always tried to do really well is to bring guys in who complement um, maybe what shortcomings I may or may not have. And, um, and so as, as an older coach now, I wish as a younger coach that I would have said to myself, hey, be true to who you are do things the way you want to do it, still go learn and listen to what other things do, but be more of an assimilationist instead of an imitation person, you know? I got two there. Uh, one, I thought one of the best things you did was you really had no ego as far as you sold the kids on your coaching staff. Like you were a fan yourself. And I thought that, I thought that was the secret to those kids uh buying in so fast was that you were selling you you had no ego about it you were selling the strengths of your coaches almost to the you know almost like being a fanboy to that point and that that made the kids buy in immediately well, I, I was a fan i mean you were coming off a state championship game when i hired you and everybody thought i was crazy here i was first year head coach why did you bring this guy in well, well <laughs> this you is great that's why me. you did it i mean you sold danny in the weight room you sold you just you sold the kids on the coaches and i think that's so opposite of, of what guys normally do especially at a certain age you know mm -hmm. late 20s early 30s they're they're too afraid that uh to you know they're too worried about their own ego or too worried about looking like they know more than everyone and you were mm -hmm. the opposite you you sold the kids on the strengths of your coaches and I thought that's why that thing took off so fast. And then the uh, talking about the book thing, my uh, I read Don Shula's book the year before I took over. I, I got my first head job, and and it, I I didn't know this. You might not know this, but Don Shula created Three Days. So I read this book, and I decided this this is the best idea I've ever heard. I've ever told you this before. <laughs> So I think idea. we might have had this conversation before. <laughs> I read uh, three a days. That's genius. We're going to do four a days. <laughs> so, and in Georgia, summer camp is like three weeks long. Like it never ends. And you sleep at the school and you practice. And we were doing four days. I mean, it was looking back, it was the most miserable summer camp in the history of mankind. And it was because I read that book and said, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to be Don Shula. I'm going to, I'm going to take it one step better. So, uh, so I guess it's, uh, you know, I always encourage guys, man, read clinics, do, you know, you got to grow, you got, you got to have that growth mindset, but your point on, but you got to be yourself too. You got to steal the nuggets and not yeah. steal the whole book. You know, that, that, yeah. And, and, you know, just kind of what you were talking about with, with building, you know, building relationships and, and pumping your coaches up. I, I think the thing that helped me was I spent three years in administration in between kind of my coaching stints, my early coaching, then I got out for three years. And, you know, when you go to principal school, you can attest to this because you've done it. When you go to principal school, they also all they talk about is, is school culture and climate and things like that. And so I'd always told myself that whenever I go get another job, especially if, if I know we can be very, very successful. I want to bring guys in and I want guys to be happy. If your coaches are, are coaching and, and you're not standing over them all the time and you're giving them some, some freedom um, to, to do things, I, I think they're going to be so much better. They're going to be happier. And it's really about relationship building. 
I mean, and that's what we've been talking about. And really, you know, if, if I could go back to question number one, what is culture? Culture is relationships. It's, it's building relationships. And, and the one thing I, I never forget the conversation you and I had um, when you left me and went to West Bladen to be the head coach over there. And, and you know, we talked about it and, and, you know, and I said, you know, Joe, I've learned so much from you. And you said, well, I said, man, did you learn anything from me? Cause I, I really felt like I was taken, you know, and I wanted to be a sponge because here you were had flipped a program had come to a state championship. And, and I had just told myself, look, I got guys on this staff who know way more than I do about certain things. And so I'm going to sponge it up. And, and, and I'll never forget, you looked at me and you said, I learned the importance of being a people person. <laughs> and uh, being a people person has gotten me a long way, um, whether it's being in YouTube or coaching or, or administration or whatever, is just being able to, to relate to people, get along with people. Um, you know, I, I think part of that's because I was a military brat, you know, I went to six different elementary schools. So I was always the new kid and new kid can't be shy. So you got to be able to walk into a room and, and, and meet people and things like that. And so for me, that's always been important. And I think if you're going to be a culture person, if you're going to walk in there and try to be a new brand new head coach and you want to do these things, you need to be able to stress to, to the administration in particular, that relationships are the most important thing to me. Because if you have a great relationship, you're going to get to what Kyle Mommy talks about. And that's morale is more important than discipline. Because if your team is happy, you ain't got discipline problems. <laughs> you don't have discipline problems if your team is happy. Everybody's coming to practice, you know, and that's why winning fixes everything. Because when you're winning, everybody's happy, yeah. you know. And, uh, and, and so for me, it's always been about those relationships and trying to be authentic. And as I've gotten older and older and older, um, you know, I, I'm trying to do that now, and, and hopefully we're able to, to have some success at Fairmont doing the same things. Uh, I think you're going to do great there. You got you got talent, and you got a whole lot more knowledge than you've ever had before. That's the, uh, you know, I don't know about you, sometimes I look back and say, man, if I knew then what I know now. <laughs> I oh, can't... man, I, I had a team. I had a team at Westover High School back in, like, 2005 that went to the second round of the playoffs that had two division one wide receivers. One went one, two went one double a and I had an East West game quarterback and I had a one double a tight end, man. If I'd have known the air raid, Oh my Lord. Oh, it would have been, it would have been fantabulous, man. But you know, I look back at some of my early teams like, man, how did I not, we should, we should have been winning state championships. And I just, I just didn't know anything yet. All right. Question number five, uh, content. I know you're a Twitter guguy. What's your Twitter handle? Uh, at Coach Coltharps, C O L T H A R P, or you can you can look me up at uh, 92 meshgroupcom our website. And, you know we do all kind of different coaching courses and different types of things for air raid related and stuff like that. All right, so talk about that. Talk about your channel because it's time. You what do you want to promote? So talk about your channel. Talk about your course. Uh, you know our, our, the channel. The channel. Uh, you know that's the bad thing, man. The channel really has slowed down a little bit just because I really was excited about having my own stuff on the channel again. You know my own film, my own cut ups and things like that. But you know obviously not being able to do that, and I just. You know, I'm, we're probably not put, we're probably pumping a video out by every once, two or three weeks right now. Um, but we'll get back into it as we start getting more stuff. Um, but uh, it's youtube.com slash 92 mesh group. Uh, Air Raid Nation is the channel. And, uh, you know, we have all, we probably have about 150 videos on there right now about a variety of different things. Uh, there is, uh, you know, a, a matter of fact, I shared a video with a coach the other day about, the head coaching interview. So, you know, I try to go through different things, staff assignments, different plays, different kind of stuff like that. So, you know, we're, we're about, I don't know, about 45, 4,600 subscribers right now. So, you know, the channel is about two years old, almost two years old. So we're really excited about that. Um, we have a, a line of courses that me and a couple of the guys that I work with have designed over on Coach Tube. Um, you know, if you want to learn the air raid, we got the foundations of the air raid system. As a matter of fact, we have a Black Friday um, and Cyber Monday sale this weekend where you can get all three of the courses, the foundations, the advanced, and the leveling up, which is what you do in year two of the air raid. Um, you know, I think it's like 89 bucks or something like that. And it's, you know, it's usually about $300. So it's, it's a really good deal. And then we have some, some download materials over on the, um, on the website um, of 92meshgroup.com. You can get uh, playbooks and practice schedules. Probably the biggest thing I have right now is the practice wizard. Um, you know, I have a, an Excel practice wizard where you can go and click and it has all the drills and you drop it down. And you can do your practice schedule really, really fast. A lot of guys like that too. So. Awesome, man. Well, I'll tell you what, you were, when you first started that thing, you were pumping out almost a video every day. 
I was just so amazed that you could come up with just, just coming up with the topics. You know, once you once you do the YouTube thing for a while, you just kind of run out of stuff to talk about. But you you were like an endless uh, list of, of different things to talk about, and your the videos were always fantastic, and your and your course is fantastic. Uh, I think you got, don't you have Shane's course on there too? Yeah, we have a, we have a developing a, a, a four-star uh, air raid quarterback course on there that coach Dular did is really, really good. Um, we have some, uh, some quick game stuff that Chris, that Chris Napier did on there. That's really good. Um, there's all kinds of stuff over there. If you go to, uh, if you go to coach tube, uh, dot com slash 92 hyphen mesh you can see all of the kind of courses are all sitting right there too so um if you if you're not familiar with coach tube coach tube is a pretty cool place man i mean it's it's the old uh it's the old coach's choice section of the coaches clinic now because everything is digital so you can go there and that you don't have to worry about dvds and i mean i know everybody you probably got a box of videos of dvds like i do too somewhere joe um that you can't really watch anymore um yeah. So I remember, uh, it was it was uh, when that when the uh, coach's choice little uh, little magazine would come, it was like flashing back to Christmas, you know, the Sears Christmas. catalog. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I will tell you, I mean, as, as, as much as I uh, as much as I do, uh, you know, pedal courses and stuff on there, I, I will say this, that I, I, I pick up a few here and there and watch a few. Um, I've, I've gotten some really good stuff, man. There's some good stuff on there. One of the best ones is the Texas High School Football Coaches Association summer. They have like a coaches school. They cut that up and you can hear guys like Tom Herman and those guys come in and talk and just, you know, just a lot of stuff. There's X's and O's, there's philosophy, there's different types of things like that. Um, you know, so we're just always trying to do some things, but like with the channel, you know, I, I, uh, I hope to get back to doing a little bit more regular, but you know, I think, I think so many people were doing YouTube and, 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 and zoom videos and stuff over COVID. And I think it kind of, I think there was kind of some people just kind of got, uh, you know, so I, I try to, I try to go for more quality. Um, you know, we are doing air raid influencers. Um, so, you know, once every couple of weeks, we'll have a guy on and kind of have a similar, uh, uh, Thing to what you're doing with with air raid coaches and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, you did the first episode of that one, so really excited about it, man. But I, coach, I I, I can't I can't thank you enough. Uh, you asked me to do a, a YouTube video a long time ago, <laughs> and you said you want to go to the studio, and <laughs> and uh, and I, I I caught the bug, and it, it's 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 something. Well, now you actually have a studio in your house, but I I can remember the look of disappointment on your face. When you saw this little ragtag room I took you to at school, and and I had my iPhone up there on a little pink stand. <laughs> well, it was it was a uh, it was a, it was on a plyo box, wasn't it? <laughs> wasn't it sitting on a plyo box? But like I, I did. But I, I I gave I gave you a tripod, man. I said here here's a, here's a tripod, cause you can't you can't. <laughs> You can't do this. So I know I haven't been over to your house, but I know Shane and them said you got you got a legit studio in your place, and it, it was probably because of that bad experience you had when you, when you saw where, where I was doing. Well, you 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 know you know me. I, I, it goes back to what we were talking about with culture building. You know, I, I want to do the best possible that I can do, and um, you know, I started off very small, and as as we started, you know, making making some videos and doing some more stuff, you know, we gradually improve to to have better equipment and things like that because i always want to reinvest and you know just to 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 make it better i mean just just being able to have you know like the, the stuff behind you and, the, and a good microphone and a good camera it makes a big difference and if guys are going to invest you know 10 or 15 minutes of their time watching the video that i put together i want to try to make it the nicest video i can just because just like i said when a kid walks in a house or, or walks in the field house and it's tore up or if he walks in the equipment shed and it's not put together he's not he's going to think you don't care so if i put the time and effort into making sure that my videos are good and high quality and you know that what i'm saying i really really care about and maybe it's something that you want to listen to and maybe something you can learn awesome man well you did a great job buddy i sure appreciate you being on here all right my pleasure coach appreciate you